Good evening everyone, time for another Silver Update. This is the daily quote list provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. reason why I'm pulling this up is just to show you the year-to-date performance so far. You can see here this year percentage column that at 30.59 silver is up almost 1% for the year while gold is down about a half a percent. Uh, the big outliers here are going to be the crosses of the Japanese yen. You can see the Australian dollar is up almost 5% for the year against the Japanese yen. Swiss franc 3.5%. The euro nearly 5%. US dollar 3.3%. And you can see the euro US dollar is 1.5%. Uh, now the reason I'm bringing this up is because we're seeing quite an anomaly with the dollar and its uh, relationship with the Japanese yen and the euro. This chart here is a cross of the US dollar yen and the U euro US dollar. So as a listener pointed out last time, I, I don't use the yen dollar, but the dollar yen. So to understand these charts, uh, when the chart for the US dollar Japanese yen goes up, that means the dollar is strengthening and the yen is weakening, whereas the euro uh, US dollar, that means the euro is strengthening and the dollar is weakening. The reason why I juxtapose these two is to point out this anomaly that we're seeing is that as the yen is getting weaker, the euro is getting stronger. And of course, it's my contention that the powers that be, and it's my belief that the powers that be mainly reside in the city of London and uh, Washington that uh, they are managing the retreat of the US dollar by uh, devaluing, forcing a devaluation of the yen as the euro recovers. So if we pull up those individual charts you can see the euro is strengthening. If we go out to the daily we can see that the euro is now broken out and start and started to rally and uh, it's been weak for a very long time and uh, of course I point out many times that the uh, weakness in the yen continues and the move is massive so uh, main point being that if any of this reverses uh, then the dollar is set for a tremendous collapse especially if for some reason the yen strengthens and the euro continues its rise so over to the silver chart, uh, there's not really a lot going on. We're kind of building a base, but we're stuck right above that uh, 30 level. I really think that we're probably seeing a bottom somewhat similar to this bottom that we put in. Uh, nothing like the spike bottoms that we had before. So we'll have to wait and see if this continues and rallies into one of these type of formations. It's start, starting to look like that's the type of formation that we're building here but uh, no one can say for sure I wanted to before I get to the main topic of the night which is going to be about the Silver Eagle and the sales I want to look at uh, an important uh, just one question from the forum and the reason why I'm going to cover this question in depth is because I think this question is truly representative of a lot of people and how they think about it. Uh, and this is from Dave606. Why did I put my life savings in silver? So there's a lot of questions here and we're going to address them one by one. I just came to the realization that the only people touting silver are the people who will gain financially from my purchase. Now, I'm not really sure how that applies to me. I don't uh, sell any silver. I know people have ac accused Chris Duane of trying to make money on silver and uh, saying that it's hypocritical for him to tout silver and sell it at the same time. Actually, I don't think it's hypocritical. I think it's consistent with his message. Uh, if you look at the premiums he's charging, they're uh, comparable to Silver Eagle premiums. We'll look at the Eagles in a bit here. So. I don't agree with that sentiment at all. I don't think that uh, the people who are recommending that people purchase physical silver are 
really making any money at all, hardly. Uh, the people who are making a ton of money off of silver actually are the people that are running paper silver operations, the ones who are basically pocketing uh, whatever investment dollars come towards them. And we know from the past lawsuits against Morgan Stanley and others that uh, they cited that uh, when they were sued and they had to admit in court that they didn't have any physical silver even though they were charging storage fees for it. They uh, not only admitted that they didn't do that, they didn't store any silver but charge storage fees, but they also admitted that it's standard industry practice to lie that you have physical silver and to charge storage fees for silver that you never purchased. So those are the people who are making money from, from people buying silver uh, because they're not really buying silver. The people who are actually selling physical silver, they have a lot of costs. They have stamping costs. They have, if you followed Chris Duane's saga of his first coin, he had to load up a bunch of shot in the back of a truck and drive it to where he was having it stamped and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, there's not a lot of money in the real thing. There's a lot of money in the fake. Uh, so continuing, why did I buy silver? One, it is a store. It is a store of value? Question mark. If I had purchased fifty thousand dollars of silver in 1980, I could now sell it for thirty thousand dollars. Not counting inflation, I only lost twenty thousand dollars. So now let's look at this one. This, of course, is highly selective. If we pull up the more research chart, you can see he's actually picking the highest point he can possibly pick in the past as his buy point and that he's comparing it to today's price, which uh, there's a lot of things. If you went and looked up the uh, price of the Nikkei in about 1990 and compared it to today, you'd have a much bigger loss. But uh, nevertheless, that's extremely biased to use that number. You could also have picked this number down here around $4 or less than $4, and you can see we're at about $30. So that's very selective. That, of course, is completely bogus. Uh, number two, it is rare and precious. If it is so rare and precious, why isn't anyone looking for it? There isn't any silver mines. People are just content to get it as a bonus when mining some other metal or commodity that they deem more desired. Okay, so this is another really big myth. And uh, I think Jeff Nielsen deserves the credit for destroying this myth more than anyone else. And uh, he explains, I've repeated it often, that uh, the reason why there are no primary silver mines and the reason why silver is mined as a byproduct is because its price is suppressed. So it is not profitable to mine silver directly. Now, if the price of silver were $100 right now, then all a lot of these mines uh, that are quote unquote uh, secondary silver mines would become primary silver mines. That classification is just based strictly on the amount of profit that comes from the different metals. So if the price of silver were 100 right now, that would swing uh, dramatically. If it were 500 right now, then of course every mine, uh, probably even every gold mine, would be a silver mine and gold would simply be a byproduct. So again, that's another completely specious argument. It has no basis. In fact, the argument uh, proves the bullish case for silver. Number three, the price is manipulated, so it is undervalued. It just came to me that if it is manipulated, it is only to make money. The manipulators don't really care what the price is, only what they want to move the price for profit. The government doesn't care what the price is because they know 99.9% .9 of the population has no idea what the price of silver is, so the price of silver doesn't signal the state of the economy. So two points there. and. Uh, the first one is it's not manipulated because the manipulators 
don't really care what the price is since they're only trying to make a profit on moving the price. Now that's a big argument that gets thrown around a lot and that argument as well is totally fallacious and totally specious. The reason being that as many have proven including Ted Butler and many others that the silver paper short position and the concentration in it is different than any other commodity. So the question that should be asked is not why is it that uh, silver is being manipulated to make a profit and, uh, and that position percentage is what it is, but rather the question should be why isn't any other commodity manipulated? If the motivation to manipulate is only to make money, then that would be true of every other commodity. So it would make sense to see over leveraged and oversized short and long positions in all the other commodities if the uh, bankers and manipulators were interested in just making a profit. Now, of course, there's a couple reasons why that's not the case. The first reason is that, in fact, silver is manipulated and it's not manipulated by the bankers for the reason that the bankers don't like silver. It's manipulated because the bankers are operating as proxies for the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve doesn't like silver because silver is a canary in the coal mine as to the uh, money printing that the Federal Reserve does and uh, if silver ever broke loose from the manipulation it would be a clear indication that the Federal Reserve has lost control confidence is lost and hyperinflation is on the way so uh, silver is manipulated the others are not that is proof that this argument is specious if it were just to make money if JP Morgan and uh, the others involved I'm not sure who they all are but they have been in the past HSBC, Goldman Sachs, Bear Stearns, Solomon Smith Barney, and many, many others involved in the silver manipulation. If the only reason to do that was to make a profit, then of course all of the other commodities would see the same thing, but you don't see that. So that is not a valid argument as well. Now, as to the reason that the government doesn't care, well, the government cares a lot what the price is. But uh, he says that 99% of the population has no idea what the price of the silver is. Actually, I agree with that. Now, 99% uh, of the population is still ignorant, but in dribs and drabs, small percentages of the population are becoming aware. And uh, we'll see that when we look at the, the numbers of ounces that are being bought of the Silver Eagle. Number four, is it real money and will skyrocket when fiat collapses? Do you really think our totally honest and moral government would let any of us who have silver keep it if the dollar collapsed? So that's the last argument, and that is uh, you can't fight the government, and even if you do, you're going to lose. Well, as I pointed out many times in the past, the one thing that every government in the world has never been able to defeat and that includes the most totalitarian governments in the history of the world including Nazi Germany uh, Soviet Russia and communist China is black markets there have been black markets in all of those societies and uh, no government power to this day has been able to suppress and prevent black markets from arising in fact uh, black markets arise uh, to the degree that those governments become repressive so that will be the case again in the future uh, until we have a worldwide totalitarian system where everything is controlled. I don't believe that we're on the verge of that. I know a lot of people believe that that's coming very soon. I don't believe we're on the verge of that. I think we're actually on the verge of the collapse of the Anglo-American uh, Japanese Empire and we're going to see the emergence of another one. So. But these are very good questions because these are the questions that go through the minds of a lot of people who are stacking silver. And when we have the smackdowns that we have, a lot of people begin to question why they do what they do. So let's use that to segue into the main topic of the night, and that's going to be the American Silver Eagle. 
I'm going to use the American Silver Eagle as a proxy for physical silver investment. Now, I know that the American Silver Eagle is not the, uh, the bulk of worldwide silver investment. Certainly, uh, when you include bars and coins from other mints, it's not the total. But I'm going to use it anyway because it's indicative of the American public's understanding and realization of the value of physical silver. So when we look at these numbers now we don't have the figures for 2012 we know they're going to come in very close to this figure that we put in for 2011 and you can see it's about 40 million ounces uh, the steady rise really began in uh, 2008 which is very interesting because as the financial crisis occurred uh, there was a steady move into physical silver. Now, of course, that was not reflected in the price of silver. We know that silver dropped drastically uh, from $21 all the way down to $850 and then rose all the way up to nearly $50 and collapsed back down to $26. But that's not indicated with the volume of the Silver Eagles. We have that steady rise from 9 million in 2007, 20 million in 2008, 30 million in 2009, 34 million in 2010, and 40 million in 2011. So a very steady growth in the investment in physical silver for the American people. Now the question is going to be how big is this number? How large in a dollar amount is that? Well it's simple to figure out 40 million ounces uh, for the year 2011, we're going to assume last year was the same, is about $1.2 billion as far as uh, calculating at $30 an ounce. So how big of uh, amount of investment dollars does that represent? Uh, $1.2 billion a year. And if you pull up the figures for gold eagles, I'm not going to pull them up right now, but I pulled them up earlier and they come to about 1.3 billion. Uh, there were about, I believe, 85,000 or something like that. So roughly that a dollar for dollar equi equivalent, uh, as Eric Sprott frequently points out, about $1.2 billion put into Silver Eagles and about 1.3 or 4 billion put into Gold Eagles on a yearly basis. So that's the amount of physical silver that is being purchased by the American people and some others. So let's put that in perspective and take a look and see how big of an amount of dollars is that. So I pulled up an article from Business Insider. This is just one thing. This is just anecdotal information. You can pull up any number of other articles. This article is about 13 ways that Americans throw away their money. And this just gives you an idea of what Americans are spending their money on. And uh, so let's look at some of these. The first one is $6 billion a year in unused gift cards. So remember that it was $1.2 billion a year that spent on physical silver and $1.3 billion spent on physical gold as far as the Eagle program. And uh, he did a calculation of the gift cards that were expired since 2005 and that is $41 billion. So Americans spent or lost, I should say, $6 billion a year. That's more than twice the amount spent on both silver and gold eagles in one year, just on expired gift cards. Next is ATM fees, $7 billion in ATM fees. Traffic tickets, Americans pay $12 billion in traffic tickets. That's four times the amount of physical gold and silver they purchase. $29 billion in candy purchases. So now we're talking about a tenfold uh, multiplier of the amount that's spent on physical gold and silver is spent just for candy and uh, it gets worse. $31 billion on lottery tickets. Uh, lottery tickets are a guaranteed loser. I don't know if that's scratch off, uh, but uh, if that's uh, mega millions, etc. cetera. Uh, next is tobacco. Americans spend $44 billion a year on tobacco, $50 billion on alcohol, $50 billion on credit card interest, 
70 billion at casinos 76 billion on soda and of course that's just corn syrup based poison 150 billion dollars is wasted in energy that's just stuff that seeps out uh, in the cracks of your house and 165 billion dollars of food is thrown away each year so that's an example just of the waste and you can see that these numbers dwarf the amount of money that goes into physical silver and gold so by any measurement by any realistic assessment uh, as the investment in physical silver begins to grow and grow exponentially you can see with the amounts 40 million ounces of silver could easily be 400 million ounces of silver and uh, that would only be 10 billion dollars which is still just a pittance compared to the amount of money that's wasted every year by Americans but if this number were 400 million if 400 million ounces of physical silver had to be delivered to the mint and had to be processed and uh, sold as coins 400 million ounces is nearly half of all the silver mined in the entire world every year. So you can see the breaking point is not that far away, but the American people is, are still completely asleep when it comes to physical silver. So all of the questions asked by the, uh, the thread on my uh, question forum, uh, they're all valid, but they're all also not real concerns for the price of physical silver because we haven't even begun the bull market uh, the bull market's going to begin when at least uh, more than one percent of the money begins to go into physical silver and physical gold we're not anywhere near that point yet it's my opinion that we're still in the late stages of stage one in this bull market I believe that the beginning of stage two will occur when we're between somewhere between 50 and $100 an ounce and uh, stage two will probably run uh, 50 to 100 and then maybe a couple hundred or 300 and then stage three after a pullback will begin and that's when we're going to be looking at multiple hundreds and possibly four digits in the price of silver and we'll talk to you next time.